Pictures. My name is Mike White. This instructional videotape is one of five on the entire passing game. In this tape, we will design plays for critical game situations. We will also look at something I know you've all been waiting for, White's winners. Okay, coaches, the next situation we're going to examine is, is the offensive going in area. And going into the goal line is, to me, the most critical in a pass offense. I'll be honest with you, I hope you don't have to throw too much in there. Because as you get inside the 25-yard line, the zones get smaller. It's amazing how much more aggressive the defenses get. It's amazing how much more variety of pass coverage and pass defense and pass and alignments that you see. And so as a pass coach, <laughs> you need a few gimmicks. You need to take a few chances. But you also have to use your basic concepts when you're approaching the goal line. Because between the 25 and down almost to the goal line, you can get combinations of man and zone and combinations that are easy to disguise so that it is hard for you to predict exactly what you're going to see prior to the snap of the ball. So most of the basic things that we've talked about through these tapes are going to be usable in the goal line area and in the, in the going in area. But we have to look at some other things. We have to examine some ideas that could help us. So the going in area is the plus 25. We, you've heard people through, through history talk about the plus 20 pass. Well, we believe that there's some difference between the plus 25, the plus 12, and the plus 6. All very subtle differences. You're not gonna have, I'm not going to have a play for the plus 23 yard line or something that ridiculous. But there are differences as we move. Now, we've talked about different concepts. One of the best concepts as we move down the field from the 25 in is the shallow cross principle. And you're all, I believe, aware of the shallow cross and what it can do for, for a football team. The shallow cross is an excellent maneuver. Remember, the tight end is coming across. He's adjusting to man or zone on a shallow cross. And again, with the disguising possibilities as we get close to that goal line, that's very, very critical because they will disguise and we can't tell. The over, as we are further out, the over becomes a tremendous two-level pass. You'll find they'll crowd the crossing receiver more. That will open the over. And even because, especially because of the fact that when we run, that this man here is running to clear. Even though there's not a lot of room, the clear here is going to keep people off the over. So the shallow cross by the Y, and of course here you have a deep route here that keeps people off. So the shallow cross as you move toward the goal line is pretty darn important. And don't forget this, you can also incorporate your individual route. You can put your, ha you can take and, and name your fullback dangle. You can take your fullback and tell him to come through and run what we call the dangle route. That route, whether it's man or zone, as we get closer to the goal line, is a very effective route. And if they're trying to blitz, which you'll see, if they're trying to play some two-man, which you will see, the combination of the shallow cross, the hope of the over to get another big play, and then using your individual routes, whether it's with your fullback or whatever, gives you a chance to be successful. Now, an additional play that we haven't drawn during these segments is, is the halfback option. And the halfback option becomes very, very important when we get down near the goal line because, again, the halfback's ability to run a route in the short zone when there's a possibility of man, zone, blitz, all the different things that, that the defense is allowed in that constricted area, we like to get the halfback and, and have him in a position to run his option route. And we haven't discussed it, and we want to make sure that, the, that we get this concept in. And the halfback, when he comes out of the backfield, he circles out of the backfield on his option and comes and runs, and just like all the principles we've talked about, and runs the route on his man. This becomes our movement key, this man. It's a, now, we're going to block a different type of coverage here. The tight end's going to block. It's a five-step drop. The halfback now is, again, evaluating on his course 
the play of the man in his area. And again, if the man in his area is playing zone, he, re he knows his timing principles. He knows that he's going to run at that man as long as he can. If the man is in no way worried about him, then he, at a, at a particular, with a particular timing, at about five to six yards, he will hook up for the halfback option. If there is anything else, if it's not, if, for instance, if, they're, if they happen to press out here, which can happen, and there's another backer in here, he then runs his route on this backer, and then he runs to the outside. The halfback has to understand the zone principles in his area and who he runs the man on. And he'll run his route on this man and hook to the inside in any kind of zone. Any kind of man, he's, they, it'll be very obvious. That man will be planted and waiting and looking. As he comes at him, he wants to put a move on him if he can and come inside. That's the shortest distance to the goal line. And as we get in the plus 20, plus 18, plus 12 area, this becomes a key route. Now, in zone, we also have a layoff. We also have a layoff to the fullback. Now, there's some, some problems with that because we have declared a protection. We have also maybe allowed the defense to play the flow of the backs. But the, that's why the zone route has to be run intelligently by the halfback, and the layoff has to be exactly like all of our option layoffs. He has to be about five yards deep with his eye with square to the line of scrimmage so that if he doesn't hit the halfback, he then hits the fullback. And on any kind of a zone route, that halfback will be here, the fullback will be here, and we have a nice two-on-one zone concept to, to get the ball down near the goal line. It should be good. Now, as we've been talking, inside the 25, and as we get down there, I think there's a time and a place to take some chances and run a special or two. And I want to just throw, you, throw up two or three specials, and then we'll go on as we go on down toward the goal line. First one is what we call pass 38 special. Now, this is based on a running back that can throw the football. And again, if he can throw right-handed, then make it to the right. If he can make it left-handed, then be left-handed. We've had that. We've made that mistake before. Where we had a left-handed quarterback, and we ran it to the right. In other words, this thing should look every bit like your toss play. This is a good formation for, for the plus 25 because it forces coverage problems. Anytime you can force coverage problems when you do anticipate man, it helps you because your man up in the press box, if they make some sort of a poor adjustment here in man, it can give you a chance to run an additional play. So again, we're going to toss the ball to this athlete. We had a young man at, at Illinois that was a tremendous football player named Keith Jones, been drafted in the NFL. We, he threw at least five or six touchdowns with this particular play because everything here, everything looks like it's going to be a run. In fact, you even at times you can take and pull as long as he doesn't go downfield, pull a guard around this kind of blocking. And again, it's just a one-shot deal, but your chances of man-to-man -man coverage right here between these two people is very, very high inside the 25-yard line. And plus they crowd it, plus they take chances. And if you can get in this guy's mind the fact that, uh-oh, here comes their best run, the 38 toss. In this case, you just toss, call it what you want. This guy can come out here and he explodes till the tight end's position. The ball under his arm. All the ones I've seen that are worth a darn could put that away and then comes out here and then he tosses that ball. This guy has to run more of a choice route. He's got to come down. He's got to come in like he's blocking. And then he either runs straight down the field or he bends back out, whatever he feels comfortable with. And obviously, if this is on the 15 or the 8, or the 10 or whatever, it's going to adjust where he goes. But again, we're beating a defensive attitude and a defensive uh, state of mind inside the 25-yard line. Now, there's drop-back passes that do the same thing. And we have a drop-back pass that we call fullback corner that is an excellent pass for the same reason. The fullback corner is an excellent pass. It's just it's off the drop-back. It catches them off guard as you're moving in toward the goal line when a lot of man-to-man -man is taking place. It's a five-step drop. 
The halfback is running a fan at eight. This receiver is clearing. The fullback is running a corner at 12 to 15. He angles and angles for the corner. Again, this probably wouldn't be real good if you're on the four yard line. But as you're at anywhere between the 25 and the 15, this is an excellent pass. The tight end blocks and then releases. This receiver goes downfield. It's a straight drop back. It is a pass based on the fact that you expect man to man and you expect something out here that they, they are going to be, they're not going to be able to react to this by the deployment of these two backs. Now, if blitz takes place, and which is the whole subject that we've told you, as we've talked to you about, we're avoiding purposely so that you'll look into in, in some of our other pr productions. But this play, even though it is a man coverage or might require some sort of a, a hot receiver, this play is still a very, very good play. Because again, it hits quickly, and it's got the double flood on the weak side, and it's got a fullback that pops open in a dead zone here that we think is, gives us a tremendous chance to be successful. Now, also in the plus 25, but down as you get closer to the goal line, but anywhere in that area, there, a, an excellent individual route is what we call a Z run back. And a run back is merely, and you can do it off your roll, remember our roll, or you can do it off of a sprint. And you can even hold your tight end. And we've talked about all this during our concept training here. We can hold the tight end, block him, and we've got our shift. Because remember, inside, that go inside the 25, there's the man coverage. Let's get this guy and this guy and see who can win the battle. And an excellent route is a run back. And it's just what it sounds. It's just how it sounds. This guy comes off. He runs on the man. This guy is pressured. It doesn't matter if he's got how many yards he's got to go. And then he actually comes back to the quarterback as the quarterback comes out here with ample protection. Because the, if blitzes are taking place, if you're worried about the, the, the real tough blitzes that can come inside here with the divide stunts and those kind of stuff, this is an excellent way to move the throwing spot. It's an excellent way to get an individual route to a good receiver and, it's, and isolate a man-to-man -man coverage in what we feel will be some sort of a blitz situation. Now, closer to the goal line, and we're still not sure about man and zone, don't forget our box pattern. Let me just remind you what it is, because again, it gives us everything that we want as we get closer, because now the overs aren't as important. We don't have a lot of horizontal zones or vertical seams. They've disintegrated. So remember our box. That's the shallow cross out of him. It's moving on here and coming across. Again, man or zone. If it's zone, the tight end settles down. Then X settles down. If it's man, they rub off each other, they pick off each other, and you have a heck of an opportunity to get a good play. You've still got yourself an over, and you've still got yourself a clear, but again, they're not going to be very important. But then don't forget your dangle. You could go box dangle, and he could come through there and go here. Or you could move your, half, your back over here, and he could come through and go that way. An individual route tacked on to what we think is an excellent combination of box route. Now, along with the box, we need to, as we were talking earlier, we need to, once in a while inside the 20, throw a different formation at him. You're, you're really, if you throw a different formation that looks like one of your other ones, and, and all of a sudden they got two tight ends to worry about and two wide receivers, you have a chance to run a play and get them off guard, especially in man coverage. So we want to examine our double cross. Double cross is an excellent plus 10 pass as we approach the goal line because you've got bigger men in here. See, as, as, as much as we talk about the goal line, remember, your little receivers that are a little fragile, it is tough for them to get open as we approach that goal line. Because those defensive people don't have any fear. They got so many friends. They got the back of the end zone. They got the sideline. They don't have to worry about a lot of things going on. So the more physical your people can be, the more physical they are, the better. And I'm not going to draw this against a specific defense, 
because it's not important. We're still, they're still in a some sort of a basic defense. But let's just draw, let's say they're in a basic, uh, a basic defense here, a 4-3 defense, or even a split, even a split kind of a defense in here, even an eight-man front in here with a corner and a safety in the corner. And, they, and, and again, they could, be playing a, they could be playing man out here. They could be comboing in here. This guy could be free. They could be playing cover three zone. There's a whole bunch of things that could be happening. So the double cross is, again, the same principle as the box. Five-step drop. Again, you have to designate which tight end goes first. That would be into your numbering system. A tough, tough release. And again, the same thing, a cross route. Man or zone. If it's zone, you, you settle down. Same way with this tight end. He busts over and he comes over the other tight end. Zone or man. And you can see the great possibilities. Then you have an over. You have an over and you still have some sort of a clear. Again, the end zone is going to be right here. So you don't have a lot of room. But you've got bigger, more physical people running a plus 10, plus 12 pass and you'll be amazed at how they pop out. They'll pop out at the outside here as they get away from the traffic inside. And it is an excellent play. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And as I said, you've got a man converted route. You've got zone routes with bigger people sitting in those zones because you're not trying to make 10 to 15 yards. You're trying to make four or six or eight yards so that you can keep a drive alive. Okay? Don't forget, another way to keep those drives alive is with the smash. The smash route, which we talked about again, down inside the 10, is another kind of a route where the corner routes, getting in there on a man-to-man -man and getting in there behind a man who's consuming another man is another tremendous area. So again, hopefully, through this entire series, you are putting now together all the components that can work for you as you approach the goal line. Some you use in a basic offense. Some are specific for the inside the 25 area. Now we want to change our emphasis specifically to the goal line defense and the goal line passing. And remember, our goal line defense is just much the same as it was in short yardage. Depending on where our strength is, again, we have to realize that when we do a certain substitution maneuver, we are putting them into the same kind of a, of a state of mind. So now we've got our tight ends in there, two of them, and now they probably have their 6-5 ratio in there, and that is very important, that we can get a 6-5 ratio on the goal line. Now, this doesn't always happen either. And you do have to be ready for the eventuality that some people inside the five or even down to the goal line will continue to play some sort of a zone even with this kind of alignment. So you have to be careful. But there are some excellent, excellent routes that come up against the goal line. The first one is what we call tight end sneak. Tight end sneak. It's off our roll. Remember the old roll? Remember the old roll? This tight end comes in here. The tight end now sneaks. And again, there's, been, there's two schools of thought. I've seen him sneak him behind, over here. It's a little tough. But he sneaks all the way back over here and catches the ball. This tight end blocks backside. And in, in two seconds, two in, in the count of two, he comes off here as, so as to get his attention before he gets there. So this is roll, right, tight end, sneak. An excellent pass on or near the goal line. Off the same maneuver, you get roll, right, and we happen to call this extra tight end a U, just because we had to call him something. This is U throwback. So now we can take and if you want to, you can block solid with the start with the, with the, the onside tight end. Because now as you roll here, you still send him in here. You can still send him out to the corner. And this is a one-shot deal. You know it's man. This guy sets up, sets up here, and then he comes on a throwback. And the throwback is going to be based on what the corner does. 
The corner's out here. When he comes off, he's going to come up this way and get the throwback. If the throwback's crowding him, and if the corner's crowding him, he can get into him, then he's going to run away from him. He's got three good counts before he has to go anywhere. He backside protects. He's in position. And when he gets that corner, he'll see his eyes. He'll see him looking in here. He'll see the quarterback rolling. And all of a sudden, he'll have a one-on-one -on -one isolated situation against the goal line defense. Excellent play. Again, taking advantage of the 6-5 ratio. I'll tell you, a dandy play pass on or near the goal line. On or near the goal line is what we call our play pass, but it's a fullback play pass, halfback wide. On or near the goal line. Again, we, we know what the coverage is. The flanker is going to run off. The tight end is going to block, and he's going to run off. The fullback is diving. The quarterback is faking to the fullback. The halfback comes across, and then the halfback runs a wide. You can see the potential. Now, there you can put this guy in a specific route. You can do this, but look at what you're doing. You're getting the fourth receiver in a flood concept to the strong side. And this pass in a, in a goal line situation, as far as I'm concerned, whether it's plus 10 or specifically against a goal line, and you certainly can do it with two tight ends, to ensure that they are thinking of the run. This has been a good run. You've seen Coach Theater talk about the fullback dive and hitting the fullback. And if you're on or near the goal line, that effect is going to hold people in here. The tight end coming off and screening people off here. The, if, you wanna, if you can believe this, the guy who's got the halfback man for man is this guy, way back over here. And he's going to get caught up in the trap. So this is a fullback play pass. Halfback wide. An excellent pass in the goal line situation. Now, also in the goal line, and this is important because, again, I don't want to leave you with the idea that goal line defenses are all man to man. They're not. You have to be ready for zone. And you have to be ready with, on the goal line, your quick series. You, your quick series must be ready on the goal line. And it should be ready from two backs, but it also should be ready from one back. You have to be ready with both concepts because, again, you will be able to tell by a formation exactly whether they're in man or zone. And basically what you run on the goal line is you run your quick pulse, in conjunction with the fade. And the fade is, is going to be caused by the play of the corner. The corner is up in bump and run. You are going to run, your, you're going to run, you're going to convert the quick post to a fade by going into the man like we've tried to teach all the way along, and then run the fade to the corner of the end zone. If the end zone is here, that's how you run your fade, right there. Over here, the inside man always runs a post. The outside man, if he gets this kind of coverage and, and it's over here, he runs his fade to the corner. And again, if it's zone, they won't be up in bump and run. And then you obviously stay with your quick post and you hit the guy that you feel can get open. And if corners are inside on all of them, then, like I say, we have to be able to go to the fade and to be successful. Because, again, quick protection in the goal line area is very, very important. Now, the other play that's critical inside the 10 and, and hopefully against the goal line is the sprint. And, again, as you can see, we are not afraid to break our formation. We're not afraid to break the formation on the goal line. Because, again, if they're in man, we want, to, we want them to declare it. If they're in zone, we'll also see it. And again, our basic sprint with this X-man coming down and moving to the flat, and with this guy coming deep, is an excellent goal line sprint. It's a good two-point play. It allows you to get on the corner, away from the, the, the rushes, and able to take advantage of man or zone. If it's man, he should be open. 
If it's zone, he's going to be open on or near the line of scrimmage like we've talked about. And that makes it very, very important. A couple more ideas before we leave the goal line. First, let's look at a drop back pass. Another five step drop and taking advantage of the goal line defense, especially man. Running the flanker in motion, coming outside the tight end and coming in in a pick. He set himself a fence. You've got to be clever about it. You've got to know the rules. Don't get in trouble. Tight end bumps, comes across and does the same thing. You can just see what we're doing. Then we're going to run the drop back pass with taking the halfback and running him on a corner, and then taking a fullback and running him wide. So this is just drop back, fullback, wide. An excellent play. Again, when the motion comes, people will be coming across to try to get over and regroup and find out who's got which man. And again, any time you can use motion on or near the goal line, it, you put yourself in a great position. This, this, the halfback will be open, or certainly the fullback will be open. I don't even know, if, if looking at this, who's got him. But this, 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 this linebacker is going to have him. He's got to sort through an awful lot of stuff to get over there and take the fullback wide. Okay. And again, we're, we're hoping it's man. We have to identify our old sprint pick. The sprint pick, in which has been awfully good for us through the years is again uh, and I won't get into the detail but it's a it's an action of picking here subtle as it is but we call it sprint pick between these two wide receivers with a sprint out action by the quarterback again you can get you can take get this man to this position and tour you can take him and bring him in motion and get him to this position you could take him from outside you could take him from outside and get into this position. What you want to do is get two receivers on or near the goal line in a position to help each other. And on the snap of the ball, this would be a sprint, right, pick. Again, we've got to be ready for man or zone. Both receivers come off the line. Come off the line. This receiver then comes in and he evaluates. They evaluate man or zone. If it's, if it's man, obviously he comes in and subtly picks for his buddy who then runs out here and runs a sprint pick. Again, with motion or without motion, with outside in motion, whatever you want to do. Now, if it is zone, if he identifies zone, as the picking man comes in and identifies zone, he goes to the next level. He's got a stem, he goes to the next level. This receiver goes out here and we get our two-in-one theory. Now, there's not a lot of room there, but it is an effective pass to take advantage of both man and zone, and it doesn't give things away, and you can use it with, as I said, with motion, with a multiple formation. You could use it from a one-back formation and even put more pressure on the defense. Now, the last pass in the goal line is one that has is, is been used through history. Bill Walsh, as far as I'm concerned, made it famous. And it's called the boot pass. And again, it's another pass that's pretty darn good against both man and zone. And again, it's on or near the goal line. And here's the action of the backs. The action of the backs is this. And this is another reason that in, this is a good short yardage pass, too. It's a double dive action out of the backs. The quarterback turns very fast and fakes to the diving back. And both guys are hitting. You get tremendous action out of the linebackers, especially near the goal line. A great maneuver is to put this guy in motion. Put him in motion because now, again, as we've been alluding to all the way along, it, it gets a domino effect in man-to-man -man coverage. If you know they're in zone, then line him up over here. Line him up over here, and your strong safety will be over here. Your corner will be here. Your M will be here. Your free safety will be here. Now your corner here is your movement key in zone. The quarterback turns quickly. This guard, this, he fills for this guard. The guard blocks for about a second, maybe a second and a half. The tight end blocks for a second and a half. The guard comes out and blocks his man. Normally doesn't have to because this guy's fading in to take the running play. The 
the quarterback then comes running to the outside, using his guard if he has to, the tight end blocks, and runs to the corner. The unbelievable, what this does to this corner, first he sees run, then whoops, he sees pass, then whoops, he's got to get deep. There is tremendous pressure on this corner in either man or zone. Man, he gets a, it's a problem because of the delay. In zone, he gets caught. And the quarterback, in, in a lot of times, this guard doesn't even have to block, and he slides out and convoys the quarterback into the end zone. So again, this is a tight formation, two tights, three tights. It's a double dive, quick turnaround fake, bootleg course, and hit the tight end at eight, either right behind the corner, or if the corner is back and succeeds, then you just run around the corner with your guard helping you as you go around the corner. Now, that's a brief look at going in offense that is the secret, in our opinion, to pass offense success. And don't forget, when you get near that goal line, the running game and the ability to run the ball as you get down near that goal line is going to take less and less pressure off the pass. You need to be able to run the ball when you get inside. If you have to throw, I hope we've given you some ideas, some thoughts, some concepts, some things to work on that can make you a more effective football team when you approach the goal line. Take a look at the two-minute situation and see what kind of plays we should use there if they're different from our normal and just what kind of things that we have to look for in a two-minute. First thing that's critical is that we become a no-huddle offensive team, at least during the last minute. And the fact that we're a no-huddle offensive team has some tremendous advantages for the offense, even though there's a lot of time and there's, and there's a lot of pressure on the people involved. But the no-huddle does not allow the defense to make substitutions and change their coverages. So it gives us a chance to do the things that we do best. Now, obviously, in the two-minute offense, we're trying to get the ball out of bounds. We're trying to stop the clock. And if we have to, we'll have to throw the ball away at times because, again, that might be a method of stopping the clock. And we have a, a, a term that we use called speedy. And speedy is a term you might consider in your offense. It's just a quick pass. You've heard our quick series. It's a quick pass where the ball is thrown out of bounds to stop the clock. We also had a series, a, a name of, called jet. In other words, you can have a play going into your two-minute offense that is, is your best pass play can be called jet. So when you come up to the line, the quarterback is calling on that. He can call jet, jet, jet. And that is a particular play. It could be Y shallow cross with the over. It could be the box. It could be the Y option. It could be the stop. It could be the scramble. It could be anything that you want in your particular offense. You can also add a tank, tank being a running play. And again, those minimize the time that it takes the quarterback to call plays at the line of scrimmage. Now, I want to draw a couple of two-minute offensive plays for you that are, to me, only used in two minutes. And they're important that we have them because either at a timeout or when we start the two-minute offense, these plays would help us make a good chunk of yardage. The first one is called Z circle out. The circle out is a 12-yard inside route, 12 yards and then a comeback. That is a circle out route. The tight end releases outside and runs a 25 yard out turnout. 25 yard turnout. This is 12, 12 and back on the sideline. The fullback is running down through here and he runs up in here in this particular area. The, t the, the X man comes across all the way. Comes across. Now the fullback normally and this is a little bit of an error. The fullback is normally going to stay and block because of, again, because of the fact that it's two-minute offense. But this gives us a chance with the drop back. It's also good in shotgun. Shotgun something we didn't touch on a lot. From a shotgun position back here, it gives us a chance to stretch those zones, get in the horizontal zones, and have a chance to succeed. Okay? The other play is good is Z deep cross. Now, I, I should digress for one second. When you're selecting a two-minute offense, one of the mistakes that coaches make is they don't select a flexible mirrored formation. And that is something that I think you should consider. One of the formations that we like a lot is a two-tight end offensive formation with two wide receivers and a back. 
This also, these can be wide receivers. So you could have four wide receivers in a two-minute offense. Why not? They're trying to move the ball down the field. Again, the Z deep cross is merely a drop back pass. With this, he's coming in here to 25. He's running a clear, and the Z, and this tight end is blocking here. This Z is running, or X is running at 25 yards across the field. Again, it's a predetermined, it is a definite two minute offensive play to make the yardage get near the goal line, excuse me, near the out of bounds so that we can move the chains and keep the drive alive. Now, as I mentioned, with the no huddle, you'll be able to use your deep ends, the comeback, the overs, the clears, the deets, all the terms that we've talked about are going to apply in the two-minute offense. Also, don't forget that the wide flare route, the wide flare route out here is an excellent route to a back. And you may have to put a back in in two-minute offense that can catch that wide flare. That area is not well defended. And a lot of times that is a five to six to ten yard gain and he can jump out of bounds and stop the clock, which is the number one thing in two-minute offense. We've also had tremendous success. During our very successful years with John Ralston at Stanford University, we would have made several two-minute drives by just calling delays to the fullback. With everyone out for a long one almost and hit the fullback on a delay. Because again, they're getting tired on defense. There's no huddle. There's a lot of time going on, and you're able to hit those guys and have a chance to hit under the coverage and still make your first down, which, of course, in college football does stop the clock. Again, two-minute offense, another key to our success. One, you might need to have formation consistency so that you can go no huddle. Receivers have to know how to go up and back so they don't have to go all the way over both sides of the field. And you have to use your deeper routes, your sideline routes, and at times hit the delay to make your ground. Two-minute offense, know it, understand it, and I think you'll be more successful. I want to touch on an area that I don't think is given proper time and attention in football, and that's the last three plays of a game. And that is a situation, and it's a critical one. Are you prepared if you have to go 90 yards and you've got one play, two plays, or three plays? So we have a situation offense called the last three plays. And basically, you've heard the term Big Ben, Hail Mary. That's all it is. But I tell you, it's important to not only have a formation, but to select the right personnel for it. Again, it's a regular drop back. And again, the first one is what we call a rebound pass. And it's just what it sounds like. Your middle man, your best jumper, your volleyball player, sprints down a particular distance. If you've got, got one play, he's got to get across the goal line. If you've got a couple plays, and he's got to get down there so they can make the game. These guys come out and get themselves a five and five relationship on him so that if and when, you're just amazing how many times that the whole pile will go up in here and that ball pops down there and someone who is prepared could have caught that tip. And it's happened be with great effort before, but I think it can happen with excellent preparation. Now, off of the, off of the, the rebound pass, you can go the deep end and the deep out. And both, in my experience, we have had success with. In other words, down, down, everyone expects a rebound pass, a deep out. And they don't, there's nobody to defend that area there. It's an excellent pass at about 25. The same thing the other way. Down, down, and a deep in. You can see the potential. You remember the Jerry Rice story? When Jerry Rice was lined up over here, or even split over here, you can go tandem and then whoever this guy is, give him a choice. Give him a choice at 25 or this. And again, everyone's over here. Everyone's stacking over here. All of a sudden, you've got a good receiver hidden over here. And he's out of there. And he's got a chance to make a big play when the chips are on the line. So don't neglect the last three in your pass game and in your preparation. So work on it. Think about it. Maybe this will give you a starting point. Coaches, the moment you've all waited for, White's winners. Here they are, listed in order, 1 through 10. No specific order. Number one, the one back box. You've seen it several different times during the tapes, both in two-man and are going in offense. The second, 
the smash concept. We're gonna, you've seen it in cover two. We're going to show it to you in the slot and have a, what we think is a more effective and maybe a better way to run it. The stop, maybe our number one concept, you saw it in cover three. I want to just explain a couple of individual routes that I think will add icing to the cake. Number four, the naked concept. You saw the concept in short yardage. Uh, we will draw both from a counter and a check with knee toss. The roll, you've seen many different areas. Cover three was our predominant. I'll draw it for you from a chief formation to give you a little bit added variety. The deep in, it was our number one in cover three. I want to show the play pass deep in and we'll show it to you from slot. The sprint in the quick, you've seen it many different times, many different areas. We want to show it to you from a formation variety of trips. You saw it in short yardage and saw the effectiveness. Why shallow, Num one of our number one packages. I want to show you a couple of individual routes. You saw it in two man, you saw it in one three. You've seen it in almost every area of the field. I'd like to show you some of the individual and call it routes that can make it a more effective package. Number nine, X and Y choice. Those are not, have not been seen yet. Those are two excellent uh, concepts that I think you'll like and will add to your repertoire. And number 10, the flush or dash or scramble. In other words, the quarterback setting up and flushing from one side to the other and the appropriate pass route. So there's White's winners. I know you've been excited. And now I'll try to finish it off for you. A lot of things can happen in a slot. An awful lot of things can happen in a slot formation. But the reason that you like the smash from a slot is because it allows you to take this receiver and put him down the field. It allows the smash route to take place out here. It allows the inside receiver to read and run his corner. <clears throat> it allows the smash is an excellent package, but with the addition of this man down here now in cover three, you know in cover two that this, is, this guy is going to take the safety and you're going to get the situation over here. You know you're in great shape that way. If, it if cover three comes now, now you have the ability to hit this guy or you can hit him going down the seam. So you have both opportunities here in this area. Now, along with this, it's an excellent time to put your dangle in here with your fullback so that if you get a man-to-man -man coverage, if you get a, a route that you're having trouble with, in, in man, you can hit this guy on his man route. The other is when if you get man on the smash, this guy, when he feels man and he knows it's man coverage, especially two man, he can run a route inside and we have a chance to get open. So now we have the smash from a slot. It just adds to the whole smash concept but gives you one extra guy to affect the coverage. Okay, now the stop. We've talked about the stop since we started. And it is probably as good a package and as foolproof a play as we have. And I think you all remember the stop. It's an out. It's a seam. OK, the fullback's here. It's a throwback here. It's a slant curl here. Don't lose sight of the great opportunities for individual routes. For instance, the stop dog. It's an excellent route. The stop tight end seam. Instead of going this way, the tight end goes middle and goes against the grain. That can be a great individual route in the stop. The stop X shake is an excellent route. The stop half back far is an excellent route. So you can see that there is a whole bunch of variety of individual routes off of the stop, all looking the same. Anytime you get concerned, block your tight end. If you want to make the stop in a particular game a throwback concept, block the tight end, block him, and then operate back here. Because you're going to get tremendous flow, and you're going to be able to take advantage with individual routes. The flatten up off the slant curl is a great one. Because again, it gives a, it, they, they start jumping on your slant curl, your halfback comes flat and up, and you've got a great run. So again, the stop is, you can see why I'm, <laughs> again, very prejudiced toward it, because it gives you everything. It gives you a moving, uh, throwing spot, and it gives you a chance to get things going. OK, the naked concept, along with the check with me concept, is a beauty. You come up to the line with a check with me. 
The safety is over, the rover is over here. You fake the toss right, naked left. He blocks for two counts on the naked concept. He is under. This guy comes over. So we've got the under at three, the over at eight, and we've got our naked concept. And again, it is a, it's, it's a tremendous, it's a, it's a solid play. Everyone's going down here. If a guy is free here, he'll come in, but he'll come in late. And by that time, this guy is open in here. There are some tremendous routes off the naked. This guy can go and you can hit him. But the na this is the toss naked from solo. Either fake the toss right, naked left, fake the toss left, naked right. Either way, it is an excellent concept, and it's one that I you know, feel very strongly about. The other naked, and you heard Coach Theater talk about the counter. The counter is becoming a, a very effective run in football today. The fullback hits in here. The, ha the halfback steps this way. The quarterback comes around and fakes the counter. And the counter is such an important play. You can, you, we find we can even pull these people to make it look like the counter. Then the quarterback comes out here. He's got the fullback in the flat. He's got the tight end over. So he's got his under and his over. And of course, he's got his clear. This is a tough play to defense, man or zone, because he comes out in a zone. It's hard to find him. And in man, it's almost impossible to find him because of the eye and the, and the counter action. OK, now, I promised you a roll, and a roll from an additional formation, a formation that is a good formation in football nowadays. This is what we call chief. This is three wide receivers. Until this minute, you haven't, we haven't talked about it. But it gives you your two back running. It forces them to get into a 6-5 ratio. And because of the, of the roll action, it gives you a chance to get on top of them and get yourself a flood coming across. A simple action from a totally different formation. So you have your out, you have your out here at 10, you have your, you have your flat at 3, and you have your clear. And again, the exciting thing is, is people now have to defense this as a passing formation with three wide, and now you have got almost all of your two back running game that you want to use. A very, very good play, the roll from Chief. OK, we've talked about the play pass. And we want to talk about the play pass deep in because of our horizontal. We want to get into that horizontal zone from 12 to 20 that we've talked about through this in, these entire tapes. We clear this man. He runs his deep end at 14. The tight end comes across to 6. And you can see what we have. Now, we can fake the play pass either direction. This is something you've got to decide. You can fake it this way and come back, or you can fake it to the tight end. It really doesn't make any difference. My opinion is that you should fake it in the direction that you're throwing. A lot of people fake to the tight end no matter what. But in my opinion, you fake toward the side you're throwing. You have pretty darn good protection in play pass. But again, you can see what you have here. You have your halfback coming in here. You have a nice level here to get in that horizontal zone. You have a clear up here. Don't be afraid to go play pass deep in, X go. Because again, they'll forget about this guy as sure as I'm here, and you'll have a chance to make a big play. If you ever get man, if you ever get cover one man, and you got this guy here, it's a great opportunity for him to run a route on the man, covering him man to man with excellent protection. OK, again, to show you another aspect of the sprint and the quick, try this formation. Again, you come up into it, you put an immediate pressure on the defense. Again, the, it's, it, in our opinion, it is almost impossible to play a hard corner over on this side when you see that kind of a defense. For that reason, the quick is excellent. Remember our old quick hitch. Just the three-step quick hitch, quick hitch, quick hitch. And we've got a good, a, an excellent play, especially into the boundary. It's a short pass. The other is the sprint. And again, you, you hit them quickly. If there's any kind of man or combination, this is an excellent one going into the goal line. You, got your, you bang him. You remember our sprint? He hits it three. 
This guy comes over here, and he comes at 14. This guy clears out. The quarterback is coming through seven and coming outside and hitting this guy. Don't forget you could use your run back. You could use your post on here. You, there are so many things you can do with a formation like this. And again, it doesn't take much to involve some of your players in a formation like this. You'll be amazed at how much fun they'll have being involved. And again, they are simple passes that definitely work. Now, the Y shallow is one that we've talked about so many different ways. And I just wanted to remind you, let's do it from one back. Remind on the Y shallow, OK? Remember, we've got an over. We've got a shallow, OK? We've got a clear. And we've got a deep. And we've got the potential of a dangle. So again, make it all one. Teach it. Understand it. Make, the, make everyone accountable for route conversion and knowing where they're going to go. But at certain times, don't be afraid to call it. Use the call it theory and just call the over. Call the deep. Call the clear. Call the dang. And again, we can also always call the arrow, which is an excellent route. So again, this is a tremendous pattern. And it has a lot of flexibility, and it has answers for almost each defense that we will come in contact with. OK. Now, two new ones to finish it off. First of all, Y choice from a two back. Again, we're going to send the outside receivers on deep comebacks or deep go to get them out of there and to affect the coverage. We're telling this and saying this is why choice. Why has got the choice of what to do. If it's cover two, he's going to run the seam and get open in the seam. If it's man, he's going to, as we've shown in every other pattern, he's going to run the route on the man that's got him, and he, he's, he, he runs his individual route. If it's two man, he has the ability to run his route at any time that he wants to in his cover two man. If it's cover three, he again gets out here, runs a route on the man, and runs up through the seam. So again, by, by defining a choice route, not, a, not an option, but a choice, because we want to get into the horizontal zones and the vertical seams, we're putting the choice decision on the tight end. And of course, we then can take, and we like to take our fullback, in this case, downfield to five yards if we can. We want to get him downfield where he will affect people in case the tight end isn't open. We, it'll be because they've deepened the coverage and we'll have a chance to hit him on an individual route. OK, now the X option to, to complement the Y option. Again, all the same theories. The outside guys, either deep comebacks or goes. Deep comebacks or goes. The tight end can block in this particular case, so you have good coverage, then he can slip out in here and be in good shape. The X has now got the same choices that the Y had. He's either got the seam in cover two, he's got any kind of two man, he's got any kind of man route he wants to. In regular man, if the guy's off him, he runs a man route. If it's cover three, and again, it's very important now that he does not take too big a split. If this rover's over here and he, it's definitely cover three, he runs at him and runs down the seam. So he's got all the choices. The back runs the follow route up to about four to five, and he's in that position in case we need a layoff. But again, X choice, Y choice, are, they are the coming things in football because they get to a different level and they put the decision on the quarterback and the wide receiver. OK, the last of the winners. We're on to the last of the winners. And of course, you see the flush, the dash, the scramble. They're all the same. You're, you've seen them. They've been made. Joe Theismann made them popular. And again, it's, it's a concept of moving the ball. It helps you against blitz. It's a quarterback dropping to five steps, pausing for a split second, and then dashing or scrambling or flushing to a particular side. Again, the best kind of a route is some route where you take people off and you take a guy across, like a Z or an X deep cross. There are many, many that you can work, run the circle out and, and run this. You can run the run back. There are all sorts of them. The key 
is that the linemen know what they're doing, and this back, when he gets outside of there, and he, there's a particular time when he slides, and be sure he gets outside position on anyone rushing the quarterback. This is a scramble concept. Look at it, examine it. You may have the kind of quarterback that can do it. So White's winners, there they are. It's been an interesting session. I hope that some of these are things that you can use. Don't use them if you don't have the kind of personnel. Try to dig some of the concepts out and see where they apply. See where some of this can help you be a more effective pass offense coach. Thank you for your time.